All right, everyone, welcome back to Starlighter I League Season 4 EU Qualifiers. It all comes down to this. This is Game 3 between Five Anchors, No Captain, and Evil Corporation. I'm Basekip. Joining me once again is Lumi, and Lumi, we're not going to be seeing a Huskar this game. Why not? Well, you know, it, <laughs> it, it, it won the last game just a little bit. I mean, it was, yeah, it, it was Huskar plus the supporting cast, right? I think the... the Bloodlust from the Ogre, very important for him in terms of his impact in those fights and the Oracle uh, constantly keeping him alive, really changing the way that Five Anchors had to had to play the fights and how they had to structure it. So they're just they're just done. But that does mean that something is getting through that hasn't made it through uh, in in some of the other uh, drafts that we've had so far in this series. Also, Arc Warden going to get banned out. They're going to force Topson out of his uh, comfort zone a little bit. Yeah, I think Topson has really shown that. He's really good on the hero. We haven't seen him had too many variations, but despite that, like, he's playing a really strong Arc Warden game. Adds a lot of versatility to the way that five uh, captain could play, or no captain, rather, <laughs> five anchors, um, because his split push has oftentimes threatened Evil Corp quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's been, and it, it seems to be their go-to as well. Like you, like you've said. They don't seem to mind picking up, you know, they, they've picked up some, the, at least the, especially that previous draft, they picked up the Arc Warden as like a band-aid solution to not having mm -hmm. enough split push and not having enough uh, ways to necessarily shove Five lanes and defend. Remaining. So, Evil Corporation, I like the read here to decide, okay, look, we, we know that something's making it through into the pool because you banned the Huskar, so we're gonna, we're gonna take one of your heroes and then we'll see how things progress from there. As, uh, Ooh, both teams picking up cores in like in the first phase mm. this is something that we rarely see like the tier one teams do because if you have a bad core matchup then Ten seconds the rest of your draft uh, has to kind of suffer a lot so Ten right from the get-go omni is a first phase pick razor is just a good counter like omni now can't lane yeah but now you know, evil corporation have four remaining picks to be able to get good burst against this razor or pick up more elusive cores that don't really care about the the link sure. at all so definitely things that five anchors are going to have to consider i wouldn't even mind them just grabbing like a fairly heavy lockdown support in, in this position because they they are going to need it and oh, that's another one of those heroes that's been banned out quite a lot uh the bane is going to make it through so Omni, strong laner, Bane, quite strong. You talked about the Shadow Shaman with the base damage and the Shackle as well. Going to be a nuisance. So lots of laning focus. Yeah, so Five Anchor wants to pair the Razor versus, uh, and Shaman to the Omni Knight. If they get that pairing, Omni Knight is going to force out, be forced out of the lane completely. And remain. Evil Corporation, from their perspective, they're probably going to try to force a 1v1 Five with uh, Omni Knight versus Five Anchors this off lane. Because Omni Knight does do very well in most 1v1 matchups. And then they're going to put a bit, their Bane probably pressuring whoever is at the mid lane. We've seen some like really sick Enfeebles making the uh, enemy midfield sad. But we're still very early in the draft and both teams have a lot to adapt. The CK ban though, this kind of strikes me as a little weird. I think it's a hero that just obliterates Razor. Like you get you get Reality Rift and you're just gone. There's, uh... Right. There's like no nothing that you can really do about it, so I, I like it from from that perspective. It's not the most amazing repel hero, right? I think that's one thing that you kind of look for with an Omni Knight is you you're enabling your other cores. So if you get if you have like a Storm Ten Omni, seconds, right, you've got a repelled remain. Storm Spirit jumping around. What what do you do in that situation? But I think the I think they're just trying to make the game a little bit easier to play for their Razor, since like you said, they do need to make sure that they don't have these horrifying core matchups where they just can't do anything and have to shuffle lanes in a really weird way just to get something tolerable. Well, Morphling's still in the pool. That's generally one of the top carry picks of the day. Yeah, I would not be shocked Five at all to see remaining. Evil Corporation pick that up. Even a little bit surprised to see the the Deuce as the ban instead of the Morphling. But maybe there's there's some like some other context here, or I, mean, I don't know. I don't think Five Anchors can really pick it themselves. So you could like safe lane Razor mid morph. Yeah, there's some potential there. 
We even saw VP running Morphling in the offlane. They they picked the uh, Morphling in the first phase, and then was it OG? Yeah, it was OG. OG is like, okay, we're gonna pick three counter Morph heroes, and then VP is like, psych, <laughs> offlane, offlane Morphling. All your counters down the drain. VP picked some cool stuff. At the, yeah, they did. So Ten seconds the, remaining. That Chatter Demon game. Oh boy. That was I mean, VP not only is there to win remain. Summit, but they're also like trying to make a statement, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're, we're better than you by a lot. So <laughs> here's a Pudge mid, you know, here's a Shadow of Demon offlane. Always have, you know, they always, always have Ramses there to uh, just kind of, he's, he's always farming. Seem, I think this, this seems like a, uh, it, I, want, I was about to say that it's a decent patch for him, but I think he's actually... My associations with him as a player is more of the, like Ursa, Life Stealer, Monkey King, like that style. The character. fighting course. Yeah, yeah, but VP have been using him in a in a slightly different way uh, at the moment. Okay. Uh, ET. Well, that's a popular hero. So, when I've seen ET being ran by, let's say, Fnatic, they run ET as a five, and then they would run like the Rubik or Shaman as a four. Yeah. And. I think coming in from maybe, let's say, the knowledge from, let's say, a year ago or six months ago, it kind of strikes me a little weird because I think ET traditionally is seen more of a four and Shaman as a five. But what I mentioned earlier is the ability to split push and deal with split push. Shaman has like Aethershock, which is like much better as a nuke. I mean, ET does have nukes as well, but his mana pool can't really support it as much. So now you see like these type of position five hero, the Bane, the Ogre, and in this case, the ET, they just don't clear waves that efficiently. And then the traditional fives of, let's say, Shaman, Wyvern, they now become four because they're the one that could actually get a ton of farm and supplement the team with, I don't know, drums, four staff, whatever, with the farm they get from the AoE spells. So it's kind of like a, a really interesting change that has developed since this patch. Yeah, th there has definitely been a shift. Do you think ET has also kind of changed in role a little bit with... I would say his aura being less valuable now than it maybe has been in the past, with only the the magic aura being on the spirit. Uh, um, I think the the magic aura is generally considered as the more important half. Of of course, when you see like a morphling on the other side, then ET yeah. is gonna try his best to get in there. But I think ET now is picked for the ogre example that you brought up in game two, where he is that kind of the melee bruiser that gets in there. I've seen, for example, Pilot die. He like he goes to the enemy safe lane, runs his uh, aura to like two heroes and the whole creep wave, and he's suddenly punching pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. And there's not much you could do uh, even against that, even as a position five. So, so the more thing we about gets completely ignored. Yeah. Underlord what, comes what, back. What are these cores from Evil Corp? Like, how are they laning this? Hmm. Yeah, that's true. The Batrider is a real, Ten maybe a real head scratcher remaining. here. Um, is this I mean, position four? Is, 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 like, or is it? Is it? Remaining. Could it be four, it four Batrider? Bat? Give Give me the Zhao Eight Batrider. Uh, I mean, it could could kind of work. Uh, they don't exactly know what the mid matchup is, just yet. Five Anchor's just gonna leave their mid. Potentially all the way to the end. I mean, Razor could be heading mid, depending on the matchup. I guess we'll have to see what happens there. Um, this Void pick is is kind of interesting. I don't know if they were trying to prevent five anchors from getting it, Dying along with the ET, back. or uh, if they just want the... It, it is a fairly mobile core, especially against the Razor, right? You can just kind of jump away. We've got the, got the Chrono, but he's not really setting up for that much this game yeah what is the combination here chrono into napalm Ten is that the pog champ remaining. yeah i don't know i guess maybe they're, they're, they're setting up for it <laughs> what if you pick like a remaining. what if you have a mid skywrath mage this game has and four position omni or bat yeah yeah i, 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 I guess bat I think the most normal support pick they could have at this point is probably like a jakiro as a four mm-hmm because they synergize so well with Chronosphere, it gives them the AoE and the laning potential. When you have Jakir on Bane that supports you, you pretty much could like fight most lanes just fine. I don't know though. This 
It's not a weird one for me. Yeah, there's 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 something going on. The last few puzzle pieces are just about to drop in, so Evil Corp, uh, I guess just thinking through what they do not want to be playing against mid the five anchors catch situation is a bit weird. Like they do have disables, but in terms of who is leading everything off. That's a bit of a question. I mean, you were talking about the, the Shaman being more of a four, so maybe that gives him more of an opportunity to get a blink, which is going to be very important to have against a hero like the Void, right? If you can blink in, get a Hex, get a Shackle, you can potentially kill him off. But okay. Here we go. I like this. They yeah. did need some building damage, for sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I like the Lesh from that perspective. I do think it's... Is, is it Core Lesh, or do you think it's support? I mean... Ten. Verdict's still out whether it's a support bat or not, right? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like support bat rider, we saw in game one, even though he laned against Underlord, or I mean, he destroyed Underlord in the lane stage, right? So that's definitely a good matchup. Choose your hero. Yeah. I and, like and the, onto uh... oh, yep. the point of uh, Shaman being a four or not. Peksu played it in game one, and he was buying things like Glimmer Cape or not. So he didn't have a blink or anything like that. So we'll see if he, it looks like, it looks like he is going to be playing it again. Yep. So no blink, I guess. Not so very late. Okay, so they got yeah, they got region, their mid player on the on the Lesh, but it is it, okay, it looks like it's a support Omni Knight. Right? That's their uh Yep. That's their five player. Well that was the Warlock player at least. On the on the Omni. Alright. Well Omni definitely needs farm, but the new soul ring, right? It's OP, so you get a soul ring and he can just <laughs> purify the jungle for days. Do you like this tiny last pick remaining. from Five Anchors? Very popular at uh, at the summit as well. Very highly prioritized. Was even sneaking its way into getting first two in a lot of drafts, and people were starting to talk about like, oh, what do you pick against this? What are the what are the counters? So I think in this game, there, especially with the Lashrac mid. If you could get past the laning stage, you could burst him down relatively easily. So, I like it. Quite yeah. a strong pick. I like it as well because it solves that who goes in first problem that okay. I was kind of talking about as well. I'm like, oh, who's going to be the one initiating and scouting? I think if you get a get like a shadow blade or a blink on this tiny, you can definitely fulfill that role where you're the one who's uh, making the plays for your team. Yeah, Underlord lineup in general has that issue, right? Yeah. Because Underlord kind of normally occupies the offlane initiator type of role, but he's not. You just waddle around. That's, yeah. Uh... And you, normally how Underlord starts a team fight is let them start it on you. But yeah, the tiny suddenly gives you, you know, a, a good, very good plan B of jumping in yourself. Dear Lord, this is the most disgusting starting. <laughs> like, you, you click on Topson and you just look at his, you look at his inventory. And I don't know if you if you'd showed this to me, like <laughs> <laughs> you showed me this like a year ago, like what the hell is going on here? <laughs> like this is this is some two K player. He's uh, a like, what why, is he trying to build into? Why like, does he what, have, what the hell is it? why does he have a stout shield? <laughs> like, is he trying going soul ring tiny? Is that a thing? I think so. Yeah, I think he's just going like a soul ring and a soul ring and a wand. Okay. I mean, fair enough. I, I'm not a tiny player, so... It does look really wonky. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks like a really bad, outdated Dota guide yeah. that I recommended yeah. to you like four years ago. Except for the mango. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's some new the mango, stuff. He, he got it as a random, you know, extra mango. Right, he didn't even right. buy it. <laughs> Alright, so what do we got in terms of early movement here? Well, we got, we got Lesh dancing his way down. Batrider with some boots first. Omni Knight. Um, the repelled Lesh seems quite strong this game, but this is not your core Omni Knight, so there's not going to be necessarily as many points up in the repel uh, super early on. We'll have to see how that goes. Bane has himself a Null Talisman. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, he is looking to be a huge nuisance. Remember the Rubik that got Nulls in game one? Uh, same that guy. That was him? Yeah, yeah. Same guy. But yeah. actually, much better on Bane. Because you right click way harder as a Bane compared to Rubik, and that extra bit of mana does help for bring up. I miss the uh, the the patch where just suiciding was the meta. You like played disruptor, oh, 
Disruptor, buy a Null Talisman, go cast three Thunder Strikes and just hit them, and then go Suicide to Neutrals and TP back. That was so obnoxious as, as observers. Like, did I miss a kill? No? Okay, they're gonna suicide. Yeah. People are dying left and right. I'm glad they changed that. Yeah, I, I think the way that they changed it was maybe a little bit ham-fisted. The like, if you die to neutrals and you're below level 6, you now have the level 6 death timer. Like, I Are you know. looking for a little bit more elegant of a solution? Yeah, yeah, I, I suppose. <laughs> it, was just like, it was just like a very clear, don't do this. <laughs> Or uh, if you do this, there are, there are now consequences. But uh, all right, I think this yeah they got immediately dewarded. Batrider wandered up here and put down an observer that immediately got uh, removed from the map. So there is not a single dire obs um, out at the moment. Actually, other observer is over on the Omni Knight as Trixie does get a nice little firestorm position. He had to do that, otherwise he was going to get nightmared on the wave steal. So thinking kind of one step ahead, right? If you run in there and you try and steal the wave, then you just get Nightmared and the creep wave continues on. So to even change the lane position at all, he had to stay in fog and then kind of aggro it that way. Pretty smart play. So oh, before people punched. figured out that offlane Omni is the way to go, one of the traditional problem of Omni is how do you lane him? Where do you lane him? And uh, we're seeing that problem on the bottom side right now, because all he's doing on the bottom side is taking Batrider's EXP. He's actually providing nothing here. Well, I, I guess he's like allowing the Batrider to play relatively aggressive. Like he's not, he doesn't have to worry about being shackled and killed. But he's sapping Bat's experience, and he's going to try to remedy that by doing some pull. Yeah, they're kind of shoving. Let's see if we can get this. This is actually, this is not a super easy time this is probably the easiest angle to, to pull this camp now because this is yes. impossible the, the southern like going going down just doesn't work at all to the that's actually so wave. big that they get that pull off yeah this is something that people were doing like previously you run like a coddle or a dazzle or something in the off lane and you shove the wave and then you get to use the pull right uh, but this i is, think that's this more on value. peksu not like contesting that i think you see a lot of really good support player keeping an eye out for specifically that and then just cutting in trying to making sure that you don't get that pull off is it that possible as shadow shaman you're, you're super slow um probably not against a bat rider right but against yeah. some some other offlane that can just threaten to kill you 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 probably can yeah you can you can stop that at the very least right. well, yeah a little bit of damage being stolen here but MC. He's going to be forced back by the Sticky. We do have ourselves an ET rotating down towards the bottom at this point. So a little bit of extra kill potential there. Okay, Sia wants to come lay in with a few extra punches. Well, one punch so far. How's mid lane going, in fact? So Tiny well, doing has got a double damage rune, so he's kind and of And two nulls. Yeah. Oh. Fire Missed the first blood. Looks so like he got a level, a couple of lucky bashes. Just kind of went in there. Yeah, a little bit of oh, early point in the time dilation as well. Maybe catching Trixie off guard, thinking that he would just be safe to run for it, but still just getting punched by the bane. Probably got nightmare and then auto attacked a couple of times as well. Sure. Right. I mean, sure he gives up the one death, but honestly, I think Trixie's gonna be fine. He's level three. He's got firestorm. Look at him. He's punching both heroes by himself. Pex who forced the TP out, bottom got stuck up a couple of times, and that was the end of that. Onmi oh, is able to break off that link pretty easily. They're kiting this Razor around really nicely. But, yeah, Trixie has the level 3 now, and Void's still not able to really come in and farm the wave while the Firestorm is down, so, so Trixie's gonna be doing okay. But, uh, so far, I'm not really feeling the effects of this ET. Right, he's kind of running around, but. Yeah, well, I think the decision to put the Omni Knight bottom with the the bat has actually worked out pretty nicely. They set up this lane yeah. to really counter the Omni Knight as if he was going to be here solo, and then they pick the Bat Rider quite late, and it's actually, uh, I guess, turns out to be a pretty decent situation for the Bat Rider to be in, especially with the Omni Knight backing him up. Yeah, doing work. Not going to get that CS. Is what's Lush going for? Does he have a bottle? No, just picking up his uh, picking up his wand. Gonna be fair and out of clarity. Bottle seems very unpopular on uh, mid heroes at the moment. Like Puck's not buying yeah, bottle, it... Queen of Pain not buying bottle. People just getting the nulls, the wand, and running clarities. 
It just gives you so little regen compared to before. And it, it often turn. comes down to if if you buy bottle and they don't, and they get extra no and just hit you much harder, out denies you pretty hard, then you kind of just lose out. The kind of new meta item these days is like you just stack Nulls, stack Wraith Mans in the mid lane. The agility hero go Pike, so two Wraith Mans is fine for them, one for Aquila, one for Pike. And then the in hero just goes, you know, double no for, for the veil. So it's just nothing but right click damage in the mid lane. Especially because you kind of hit this timing as well where you've harassed the other guy down and you've just picked up your two nulls and your, your wand and you've probably got your raindrop and then you both trade some harassment and then you end up just going to the shrine. So yep. the, the shrine coming up in five minutes I think also uh, plays a pretty big part in, uh, in that. And lots of, I guess, there's still some pretty spammy mids um, at the moment, but a lot of the mids that used to spam really heavily and then go and run for the rune um, kind of struggle a little bit more now. Like, I'd say Dragonite is a big example, right? People just kind of buying Soul Ring on Dragonite instead of, uh, instead of Bottle. No, this Bane is I mean, when you see, punching. When you see Lashrak as one of the most spammy mid not buying Bottle, then you have a pretty good indication of what kind of game it is, or what kind of patch it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, Bottle seems like a much more offlane item now, with the, being able to buy full Bottle from the Secret Shop. There is a real battle going on for the six minute bouncer and... and Any bashes? And we're about to see. Bash him! Ooh. Ooh, didn't dodge it. Mm. I think they were even just maybe hoping to force the shrine usage there. But. I mean, Flensmeister just didn't believe in the bash. He jumped away. <laughs> Should have just kept hitting him. Should have just stood there and <laughs> bashed away. I know I'm getting this bash. Yeah. You uh, gotta play like that or else you're not getting it. That's true. All right, there you go. There's that shrine coming up. Let's get in some mana back. Topson's still doing all right here on the mid lane. Pretty happy with his uh, soul ring HP regen. So he's looking fine. Going to be picking up some treads next. Drum coming shortly after that. Uh, maybe shadow blade thereafter. Get that initiation item up. There are so many. I think almost everybody on Evil Corp actually just dies to tiny combo, right? Through the through most portions of the like early to mid game, depends if the army is there to like repel or heal or not. But yeah, if if Tiny gets a clean combo, it should be a, a good kill. Which, by the way, I really want to give a shout out to the Omni player. Earlier, I was kind of poking at him a bit, saying like, "Oh, he's gonna sit there in the lane, not do much." But he's been kind of on and off the lane a lot, contesting runes and mostly just stacking the jungle. Look at the level differential. Batrider is about to hit like six and a half because of the stacks. And Omni is sitting at three. Like he's being mm -hmm. very sacrificial. And now he, you know, he's going to sap low the EXP on the bottom to make up for it. I like the way that they've been kind of working the positioning at bottom. I feel like the, the bat has the opportunity to somewhat sit on the wave because the Omni has been sort of scouting off to the side here. And right. if, if they ever, like if the Rasta ever tries to wrap all the way around and go for the Omni Knight, then the bat just throws sticky stacks on the razor so that he can't run through it. Yeah, it's done in the it middle almost, lane. It almost feels like uh, oh Thompson dropping low. Yeah, it he almost feels like the by the Omni being there, he takes Rasta out of the equation. Yeah. And I think Evil Corp is fine with that, right? Like the Bat Rider just gets farmed there. And the razor doesn't do what the razor normally does, which is dominate the lane. Yeah, and then they can give the lane to the Omni later to just get his levels and get those points right. up on their repel so that they can uh, have the Lesh run around with the fights and bat. Charging in a little bit. I don't know if they can really go for this kill. Nephi's going to get close. Does get the lasso back out. Is there going to be enough damage? Peksu does have a shackle ready to go. Own me. Over committing uh, really hard, and we were just complimenting them, and now they're dead. <laughs> to the underscape with you. I don't know about charging in against that, uh, that static one like that. Yeah. I, did, like, I don't even think the Rasta did that much there, right? He no, did, like, the unstable a... current did, like, most of it, honestly. Yeah. And, of course, the Eye of the Storm. Oh, bit of trouble for the Void. Does have a Chrono available. He's gonna jump off some of that damage. He's gonna go for the Mask of Madness build. Farming pretty nicely up here. Uh, though, a little bit behind the Lesh, who's now clearing out some stacks in the jungle. He's gonna be queuing up a Bloodstone. Uh, that's the first big item here. Which is, I think, I do wonder, probably fine. I do wonder if uh, Evil Corpse is going to make a big move, or are they content to sit relatively, like, static? Attack. And what I mean by a big move is probably, like, Void and Lesh joining up. 
going for a kill and then tier one push. Because there's a lot of burst damage with the chrono and uh, you know the the magic stuff from Lush, but looks like they're going to back to their respective lane and the first move likely is gonna come from the Batrider oh. instead. They chronoed up top. They want the Thunderlord kill. Trixie gonna get bashed down. You get a little bit of a counter initiating stomp, but that is about it. So not gonna be the big move, just a quick little pick off and then back to farm stations. Yeah, Lush tanking up a bit more, picks up the point booster. ET still, I, I feel like the supports from five anchors just not really doing very much. Uh, maybe feeling a little bit lost against this Omni Bat lane. The switcher really catching them by surprise. Shaman has managed to grab his level six, so we'll probably see him go and drop some Serpent Ward somewhere soon. But uh, they are making a big rotation up top. Nemphi actually committing pretty hard to make his way up here. And Omni Knight oh. might just be dead. One more hit's gonna do it. Can he juke his way through the Ooh. fog? Gets the purification off at the last moment, but he's not fast enough. And nobody's helping him out. Poor, poor Omni. One more touch is gonna do it. Flensmeister has to hold on to the jump. They now get the Hex over onto the Bay and the Shackle as well. Trixie gonna lay in with the Firestorm. And now Nemphi arrives on the scene. They did end up losing their ET, but that is a three for one. And five anchors. All right. Complained about their supports. Not really feeling all that impactful, but... They definitely did some work up here, and uh, I like the decision to just kind of bring almost everybody to defend That's that. Just felt part. like Evil Corp just kind of collapsed in communication. Like people just running in different directions. I think it, I felt like if they all run in the same direction as a group, they probably lose maybe one. Yeah, but they kind of split up all in different directions. The lush is huge at the moment. I feel like yeah. five anchors can't really run into this lush rack, especially if there's no creeps around, right? The edict and edict and the pulse nova just shred you. But yeah, for yeah, yeah. When Razor was tra chasing the Omni, if like Ryujin just walks towards that, that general direction, I think Razor has to give up a chase because I don't think Razor could kill him quickly before he dies. Yeah, but then there there was something going on in the river, and they caught the ET, and the fight split up, and it just got yeah, it got messy. I I don't know about going for that push, having just used the Chrono, like they did, right? They. I think that's a big reason why five anchors are so willing to bring everybody up there because they know that the void isn't really a threat at all. So they can just ignore Flensmeister and uh, ends up being very nice for them. And now they're going to get the kill on him as well. Chrono just coming up, but easy little rotation in, in the route. Two points up in the Pit of Malice from the Underlord. Trixie, not, I mean, not a wholly unusual build to skip the Dark Rift, but pays off pretty big there. Just gives them that little bit of extra time that they need to get the Shadow Shaman in with the extra disables. So, Pitlord's going for the Vanguard first. I'm not sure if I like it this game. It seems like Hood is where you want to be at. There's nothing but magic damage. Dyer's middle yeah. Is under attack. Vanguard's a good laning item because you, you know, tank a lot of right clicks, but even the Void, right? When when he's bashing, he's stealing mostly magic damage. Yeah, I really, so I don't, I don't know. know. I really don't know if I like this conductor. that much. Tiny farming ancients. Tiny farming everything. Thompson, you know, not really going to get involved, it looks like, until he has this Shadow Blade picked up. Um, looks like he's already got, already has his Claymore over on the Courier, so doesn't have too much farming to do to grab that. They're going to jump in Chrono here on the mid lane. They want this kill on the Razor. Looks like they should be able to get it. Just Peksu, a little bit out of range. Funspeister does need to be careful about getting comboed, and he's down. They've silenced up three. They could not come in with the Repel. It was very nicely done from the ET. Now the Grip coming in onto the Underlord. They are going to throw out the Omnid Ultimate. Did they have enough damage? Looks like the Les should have it in spades, but it's actually Peksu once again saving the day. Oh, and now with the toss back. Thompson making some very nice plays. Said he wasn't getting involved, but they're going to turn up right on his doorstep, and uh, he will be able to help Radiance out. I think that was actually Still, though. Chronos here, and, you know, 2 for 1 trade. Ryojin getting most of the kills. He's already 2 Bloodstone, so he's doing quite well. Yeah, that's really the, nice for him. Yeah. The last player I really have issue with is the Batrider. I felt like... Did he go for drums and decided to turn halfway to now back to blink? Um, I don't know. He's got like most of an Aether lens in his. Or yeah, I, I don't know what's going on here, but like, like an old, you can't, you can't old have Aether a, lens. 
a zero impact bat rider, which is kind of what's happening, right? It's been 15 Radiant minutes. We haven't dead. seen anything from him. Yeah, that's that's true. Radiant's bottom tower this is, is very strange. Attack. I mean, once he gets his blink, it's like four steps, not that far, but yeah. We, he dropped that one lasso. It killed him. <laughs> and then he just and then he's like i'm out I'm <laughs> yeah I, I i farm it's just like a i don't know maybe it's he's a gonna... mentality right you go for a gank it fails he's like all right see you guys he's gonna cut some waves i guess Didn't by the way roshan <laughs> taken down uh yeah. recognizing that there's no chrono so they just go in with firestorm use the firestorm yeah then they're gonna jump in bane pretty survivable has 17 wand charges and a brain sap potentially they save him with the Repel. Very nicely done. Okay, that was pretty good play, but this tier one is still taking tons of damage. Are they gonna really commit for this? I guess so, they cleared the wave so damn quickly. Looking for the stomp, they do get it over on the Omni, so Lesh a little bit out on an island here, but still feeling pretty tanky, charging forward. Wasting a lot of time, they do get the grip over onto the side, but it's on the ET, and now the Lesh in a somewhat compromised position. The Bat does have his blink, jumps in with the lasso, can they burst the Razor? That's the big question, looks like they should be able to, and even the Underlord surviving on a sliver of HP. If he died, then I think that would have been a complete team wipe. And it looks like OKC also can be brought down. Can they give him the Bloodstone charge here on the Lesh? Nope, he's more interested in pushing the mid tier one. So you're asking, can they actually just sit there and push like this? They can if the, the blink isn't online, but it was. And they didn't know about that, so. Meanwhile, on the back line, Topson gonna find it. Oh, we're gonna set up for the secondary kill as well, but on the Chronosphere on the back line, going on Peksu, it's gonna be a 1v1 trade, and I think Flymeister should be able to get out himself. That was a key kill. They just killed him after the Blister. Yeah, I wasn't even able to use the, the suicide because he was stuck in the chrono with tiny walloping on him. Very nicely done by Topson, realizing that he could set up for the like, for the plus one, right? Getting the avalanche onto the lash, keeping him pinned under yep. the tower. Okay. Now that the tiny is getting involved, I feel like the five anchors game is starting to get a bit oh, easier. Oh no, dead. Void, you do not want to come running up this hill. Not into the double damage tiny. Not a good look. Right. Topson now changed this away from the blink dagger that he was building towards to, to a Echo Saber. Saber. Mm. There's like some some Radiant's decent plus and minuses. I was watching No Tail play a lot, and he goes for both blink and shadow blade. And the blink allows you to really get some nice like blinked tossbacks. And that is especially good against like a hero like Lestrak. Yeah, I think especially when you've got heroes like E.T. and Shaman, right? You can like toss back into a Hex or toss back exactly. into a Echo Stomp. Or you, you toss one person, then you already have the Echo Stomp going, so nobody else can counter initiate. Like if they try and run forward. Oh, Omni looking very dead. Tops are going to pick up that kill, and meanwhile Bane yeah, does manage to scoot himself away, but feels like Topson just running from place to place. Razor in some trouble. Nemphy getting stacked up. Does have the Eye of the Storm running. Gonna try for the TP out. Could blink and cancel it. Oof. Ooh, almost got it. Here's the thing. If he blink and lasso, I think he dies. I think he Yeah, he doesn't have Firefly running. <laughs> so the, the, yeah. the sticky stacks do not matter in the slightest. He's, he's just getting... He's just trapping the Eye of the Storm next to him. <laughs> oh, Topson. Another Shadow Blade. Another pick. Ooh, can he get the pick off? Yes, does manage to clear it out and the tree grab. Enough first. Right, this is classic Tiny taking over the game. 7 0 0. And every kill he gets, like, the supports are getting poor and poor. Now they have to buy sentries and Pexu drops wards on your base. And does do they the sentries even. Control. Yeah, do the sentries even, like, save you? Maybe not. <laughs> Interesting situation. We've got a lasso. This time around they've managed to find Pexu, but is it that big of a deal? He's already used the Mass Serpent Wards. He's hoping that somebody has a Force Staff, but not the situation. Tier 2 going to be dropping very, very soon. Trixie ready with the escape, as looks like they will not be able to get the deny. And they're straight back to bottom, where they're going to be able to continue pushing and continue farming. Very nice use of the Dark Rift. Yeah, 5 Anchors to me... Even though they lost game two in a very spectacular fashion, through to a nice comeback, they're the ones that always are winning the lane stage. They're the one to me that's perhaps a little bit more mechanically gifted compared to Evil Corpse. And I think we're just seeing that, like, throughout all the laning stage and throughout most of the mid game, it's 
five anchors fighting most of the better initiations, the better kills. I think they seem to move around each other a little bit better. Like, to sure. me, this move from Evil Corp is just like... You have five heroes off the map, you're five manning a building. Do you really need to have all five heroes here? Could you be threatening for something else? Could you be, uh... Yeah. They're like conceding mid lane and bottom lane pressure at this sure. point. And now they're gonna have to go back and deal with that, at which point five anchors seeing heroes on two different lanes are gonna... Probably go and farm even more, uh, build up this net worth lead. I do have to say that the net worth lead is not that significant at the moment, though. So it's not. Even considering the fact that Tiny has been farming ancients, and Evil Corps, to my knowledge, hasn't been. Um, I feel like Evil Corps should be much further behind than they actually are. Yeah, they just need. Oh, okay, we got some. I feel like the Lesh is he's very farmed, but still going to take another item or two to really feel super duper scary. I, I don't mind the BOTs. I mean, we've seen them struggle against split push a little bit in the past, yep. so... Also really nice with the Batrider, if the Batrider finds somebody split pushing near a wave, you can just TP in and uh, find that kill right away. But it is still somewhat of a farming item, right? It's and, uh, looking for a trade here, but the tier 2 is already dead, and I think Topson... Keen to yeah, maybe... wards. Yeah, they're gonna get a few punches in on this tier 3 tower. But more than a few with the Echo Saber and the double damage. Bane gonna come in no points in the Enfeeble at all. Looks like they are just gonna leave. Peksu is the one who is uh, left for dead here. It's dragged back inside of the base. But the tier 3 is so low. Oh, is he gonna is get he gonna, it? Is he gonna get it? One more volley? Oh, oh 21 health. And at the same time, it's the Omni Knight who dies over it at top. Poor guy. The Tiny just walks in and backdoors it, right? Getting in that backdoor is actually pretty decent. Opens up the shrine. Yeah, but, but is, is there a sentry in. there? That's the question, right? Do you just walk oh, into a They are dropping group? a sentry. The sentry is meant to, I think, D-Ward, but it's out of range. All right, feels bad. Topson. Oh, freebie. <laughs> just the, the TP out before he even hits the ground. Poor Bane. Cool guys don't look at explosions. Exactly. And oh, Lesh continuing to farm, but they, I feel like they're playing decently to just kind of Keep him at arm's length. They definitely want this pipe up on the Underlord before they try and engage too heavily into the Lesh. Because the one nice thing about the Lesh this game, or at least from the Void's perspective, is it doesn't really have to worry that much about catching the Lesh in the Chrono, right? So long as everything is already running, Lesh is actually kind of happy to be in the middle of the fight. Be in the Chrono. The chrono. Yeah. yeah. On the same regards, he doesn't care about getting linked at all. That's why it makes such a strong final pick against the Razor. So he gets to run in willy nilly and turn on out. Oh, they got the lasso on the Underlord. Pretty tanky. We'll be able to pop his hood. Trying for the TP up with the immediate stun. Popping everything that he's got. Oh, oh, can he survive? Oh, that was such a nice attempt with the Earth Splitter. Yep. And that's the gank that you were mentioning uh, with the BLT coming in. Assisting to pretty much steal most of the damage. Topson trying really hard to work on this building. He pops the drums. Here go. we go. <laughs> got him. The drum literally had no impact in that engagement, but it was cool. So it's like, I have this charge, I'm gonna give it everything that I've got, just to, just to get this. That's true, you don't want to regret anything, you know? Yeah, like, you, oh, maybe if I pop my drum charge. Yeah. 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 Okay, Although so the now, now they can get the shrines at some point. I'm gonna, no, I got a gem picked up on the Batrider. Alright, mm -hmm. I like this a lot. We went from own me kind of having a little bit of a slow start to now feeling fairly impactful. I think on the bat rider, he's he's got the his team's kind of ready to play around him as well, especially with the the BOTs. Let's just picking up a Shiva, which I, I guess is okay. It's all right this game. The, the armor definitely going to be helpful. I think Lesh really won't be able to survive if he's like getting hit on by everybody until he gets to BKB. But the way that he's itemizing is that he's trusting in his void and the bat rider to start the fight for him the way that he wants. He sits in the back, let them do their thing, and then he gets to, you know, blink in or walk in and then deal most of the damage. Yeah, he does have this the potential really backup a... of the Omni Knight, right? But Omni has, like, nothing. He's got no positioning item. He doesn't have sure. any way to ensure it. Yep, I'm going to beat the Elder Titan to death here for sure. One more swipe. 
of the maze from Flensmeister. However, Ryujin may be a little bit too far away from a home. BKB popped from Nemphi. He wants this. They're going to use the Chronosphere fairly defensively. BKB is still a decent duration, and they do manage to tap the Shrine as they come in. The grip is being used. Trixie, what can he get down? This is another big choke point fight, potentially with the Firestorm, but the Pit of Malice is on cooldown. Ryujin ticking low, ticking low. It's actually Topson who is not here in attendance for this fight. I think he's just taking racks at bottom, doing a decent amount of work there. Razor gonna try and kite around Flensmeister. Is he gonna jump forward aggressively? Does not want to do so, just in case the link is up. Topson's trapped inside of the base. Looks like he will just get burned down. He tries for the TP out. He did not get the barracks. Oh man. Five anchors, bit of a, bit of a sloppy engagement from them. Yeah, five, five anchors kind of got baited by the own shrine, right? Because. Nemphi popped the BKB, so they chronoed him, and then the, the Rasa walked in to tap the shrine. Just like, okay, we are under a shrine, we have our BKB core. That was, I believe, a 10 second BKB fight for the Razor as well. And then halfway yes. through the fight, they started to realize, wait, without this Tiny, who is like literally 85% of their damage, they don't actually kill anybody. Even though they had a good Firestorm, there was no Pit of Malice to control during the Firestorm, so... Five Anger couldn't kill anybody. The Tiny did not time... have a TP, or does TP get cancelled? I guess he just hard... He, he had a TP, because he used it at the end there, right? So, right. he just hard committed that... for the racks and couldn't get yeah, it. Yeah, that, that might also have been like, hey, you guys fight at the Shrine, just take us by all time. to fight us. Yeah, by time for the racks, but... I don't know. Last is available, but they don't want the Underlord. They want the Shadow Shaman. Going to burst down Peksu very, very quickly. Oh, maybe not. He gets the Hex off. And they're coming in with the Link onto the Bane. Force Staff going to try and get a little bit further away. This Earth Splitter catches both of the supports, and they should just get burned down. He tries for the Fiend's Creep, but buys them a couple more seconds. Flensmeister does need to be careful. Virgin uh -oh. now coming in with the Blink. Can he do enough damage? He gets stomped up. Trixie, is he going to cancel this Evac? Nope, he is just going to go through with it. As it ends up just being a support for support trade overall, Topson lurking around, hoping for some kind of a pickoff. What can he actually find? No, looks like looks like nothing. Does, does need to be careful. There's actually a sentry ward waiting for him, over at that hill. But you see in these team fights the difference of having a blink initiator versus not, right? Like yeah. the bat rider being able to selectively take fights that are looking good or bad for the team. And then, whereas I feel like five anchors, they could have had a blink initiator if Tiny went for it, but since he didn't, they're kind of just waiting to get grabbed. They're always, it feels like they're always starting the team fight on the back foot. Yeah, and the vision game's gonna get even worse as well, right? With the Batrider picking up this gem now. He can just de ward everywhere, make it really difficult for the Tiny to continue split pushing. So Tiny is gonna actually have to come and participate uh, in fights. He's going for a BKB, which I guess like he doesn't really want to buy uh, necessarily, but I su I suppose he has to this game. It doesn't it doesn't feel it's like it's not a feel good BKB. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a feels bad BKB. And the idea behind that is you pop it, even if you get Chrono, even if you get Lasso, if you get to activate it before those spells come off, then you don't guide to Lush because Lush is, I think, most of the damage for the team right now. Although Void's really ramping up. Hmm. Interesting it's like from, a mid uh, yeah. I was going to say, it's just a mid-game kind of stopgap item. Yeah. The, uh, Lesh, interestingly enough, well, he did queue up an uh, Aeon disc, but has now decided instead to look towards a Lincoln Sphere. I don't even know if this Lincoln's is necessarily so much for him. I think he's probably going to be casting on his teammates a lot, especially the Void. Because that, that's the okay. one way that the team fight can go really badly for uh, Evil Core, right? If they, if the, like, Omni Knight gets jumped and bursted in the back, and then they also manage to get, like, a hex on the, the Void, and the Chrono doesn't come out, and then it's just, it gets very, really ugly from there. But they do have good counter initiation, so I don't think that should be, it. like, that's not that easy of a scenario for five anchors to pull off. Especially with no mobility item on the Shadow Shaman, right? He's just got to kind of walk in with his 335 move speed. Do you think they need a gem on the Radiant side just to kind of combat the fact that there's a gem on the on the Dire team? Because they are losing the vision game quite hard. I think ideally they want to smoke and just kill this Batrider, take his gem. It's not, I mean, sort of part of it is the D ward. That's definitely true. But it's also that Tiny feels afraid that he can't play the way that he's been playing. 
which is walking around, finding solo kill, and creating space for the team by doing that. Yeah. So not only are they losing vision, but they're also losing the thing that's been gaining them a ton of vision, which is the tiny gameplay. Yeah. As I say that, though. Ooh, oh, perfect combo! Not enough. A little bit too tanky on the void. Ogrex helping him out a bit there. He's still in the trees, oh though, oh and God. doesn't jump all the way in. Oh, no, void. Dead for a minute. All right, what is, what's their plan here? There's no way that they can Dude, do Roche. They're just going to push The wrong away. shoes on, man. Didn't have the Nikes. Had the Reeboks on. <laughs> oh, I, think it, I think his shoelaces were tied together. I don't think it mattered what <laughs> shoes he had. Fair enough. All right, Thompson, got to be very careful. There is detection for him. If they napalm in, they see him, they can kill him. But he does have go. max growth, so the uh, magic resist is looking strong. Status was just very, very strong. They get the Nightmare the Underlord. Immediate break on that link. Nicely done. Batrider going to be looking for the last. So, but the, it just end. doesn't <laughs> last any time at all. Oh, man. And now they straight up go, but of course... Thompson is trapped by Warch. No, 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 no all right. not he's, this time. He's good. He's good. All right, very quick Roshan coming up. Aegis and Cheese, the prize to be claimed, and a very nice pit of Malice, making it difficult for them to move through. They do get the repel over onto the Lesh, and he just charges forward, picks up one Bloodstone charge to begin with. Trixie dropping kind of low, but Lesh not willing to hard commit to this fight. The BKBs have been popped, and the Dark Rift from the Underlord will escort them all the way back to safety. So that was the the end of that. Void did have buyback that entire time, but I guess deciding that he just desperately needs this BKB instead. Yeah. What I really like out of Five Angers gameplay is that throughout the entire series, they are very decisive when it's taking an objective or going for a rush. They don't hesitate at all. Somebody makes a call. Um, for example, like once the lasso down, they they recognize okay, there's no chrono, there's no lasso. We could do whatever we want in these team fights. So they just went in for Roche. They committed everything, and they took it down very fast. Yeah, and their vision situation wasn't even that strong. I mean, you look at this uh, observer ward that they have over on the high ground across here. It doesn't see anything they need yeah. to see, right? Yeah, it, it doesn't give them any important Dyer's vision. But they just they know that the with the cooldown situation, the way that it is, they can just kind of do, like you said, whatever they want. And uh, all right, Void does have his BKB up now. We need a need a big chrono to start turning this game around. Perhaps the net worth is still so close, but I mean, so much of the net worth on the Dire team is kind of bundled up in this Lesh, who has once again changed his mind on the item decision. Uh, he's going to be just going for an Octarine. Doesn't actually increase his damage output that much, uh, but does definitely help with the survivability. Maybe with this he feels brave enough with the Repel running to just charge in. Because I think yeah, that's what he has to really do. He has, what... he has to scout for the Void, right? That's the that's the deal here. That's a good clap. Hits the Void. Yeah. They don't know it though. Looks like he's going to be okay. They will be able to clean up these Master Serpent Wards. I mean, that tower is down to nothing at this point, so... That's, that's an push. Echo Saber hit from Tiny. Tower or not even. Attack. Now it's just a regular hit. 88 HP. Man, how come Lestrac players, there's no love for Axe. That yeah. deals a pretty decent amount of damage, giving you the extra lightning every couple seconds. Not even a couple seconds. Like, you blink next to target, cast Edict, they're dead. Yeah, it's it's, it's definitely interesting. I don't know. I think it, it certainly could have been could have been good here. Super annoying like you for said, the supports the... to deal with. The Octarine doesn't actually increase your damage output by too much. No, it, I mean, it doesn't really change the, the number of edicts you're getting off in a fight. It doesn't really... Uh, and, and a lot of Does the time, unless your you, you're not just standing there uh, spamming Lightning Storm, right? Oop, they no. can find here. They've got the lasso, but it's onto the Tiny once again. I don't think that really matters. He gets the BKB off just in time before the Chronosphere comes through, but they do have the Earth Splitter also doing damage to Flensmeister. He's focusing hard onto Peksu, but it's still just taking him way too long. One more hit is going to do it to finish him off. They do find the Omni Knight in the back lines. Aegis as now Nemphi pops back up. Thompson still has the cheese, took almost no damage. I don't know where Lesh is in this fight, but he's not doing anything really. And that's just gonna end up being well, three for two. Aegis did end up being popped, but Man, that was 
they were just on different pages. Like, Ryujin wasn't even near the, the ballpark during that fight. Yeah, he, he did the same amount out. of damage as the, like, Batrider in that yeah. fight. That was... Not... Also, like, the Void barely killed a, the Rasta because of the, the Crimson Guard, so... Like, the Void actually hits for no damage. This is a position one Void playing like an offlane Void, pretty much. Thompson just charges in. He's gonna get stunned up. In a little bit of trouble, but they've managed to find the Lesh now. Can they burst him down? It's actually so much damage. Just the right clicks from the team. That is the dead Lesh. 30 seconds. Does have a fairly fast respawn, but does not want to expend this buyback. They do have a Glyph available as well. That's gonna buy them a few more seconds. Grip not ready to go. Lasso is back up, but they can't really use it on the time. They are gonna go for it over on the raise. The buyback coming in now. They forced them to commit to the fight, but is it actually gonna be enough? Trixie gonna try and evac everybody. They will not be able to save the Elder Titan, but... And Pexu just charges in to drop down the Mass Serpent Wards, which immediately get cleared. Alright, two supports feeding somewhat, but uh, they get the buyback for just the two supports, which I think was pretty value. Well, they also got their gem back. One of the supports had Bat Raider's gem. So, it's... I mean, it was still pretty bad for uh, Evil Corpse. Pretty questionable play by the the Lashrak on the first death. He played like he had a BKB or a repel. He had neither, and just straight up died. Oh, Thompson, gonna burst yet another. This sleep's not gonna last that long. He's got another toss. Gets straight into the grip. Also not gonna last that long. The do have the chain stun. And he Bot. is dead. Uh oh, it's five anchor. Gonna let the door wide open again. Because now it's Ryujin running down mid again. He has Octarine finish and he's sending out the quarter for it right now. They could take Rax. They could. They definitely could. The Edict's going to make pretty quick work of this tower. There is a Glyph available and there is the spam from the Underlord and the Elder Titan. So it's not going to be easy, but there is also a Chronosphere available from Flensmeister. So if he sees a good opportunity, they could, uh, could get some work done here. However... Top wave is just shoved all the way in, and then it's gonna require a response from this Lesh. He's only gonna be back yeah. at base for 40 seconds with the Octarine core, but that's enough time. That's really unfortunate, because I think they really wanted to force out the buyback on the Tiny. Or, you know, do some sizable tier 3 damage. Even if Top is... wasn't pushing, can they push into the Firestorm plus uh, ET? They could wear out the building a little bit. Probably won't take it, but... For example, like, you should repel the Lesh and he just walks in with Edict, right? Yeah. You at least force the Glyph. I think that's the... Yeah. It's sad that they didn't manage to force the Glyph at all. They didn't They didn't really make that much progress other than getting the, the tiny kill. Just, of course, nice gold and stops him from farming for a little bit, but... Still not what they were hoping for. Void is... Uh, what's he got? Does he have a crit? He does. Um, I, I don't mind this build that much. I guess the thing is, to, to do any damage, he has to have the Mask of Madness activated. It feels like it's maybe a little bit lopsided towards damage and maybe not enough attack speed, but I guess there is some on the Shadow Blades, so... I wonder if Maelstrom into Mjolnir is just better damage, because the, the Lightning Shield is actually going to do a lot of work under the Firestorm, right? Yeah, there's there's, there's some damage over time going on that would uh, get some decent I mean, I, I guess It's also a good farming item. You'd at the same time, have you don't want to stand under Firestorm to do damage. That feels dubious. Hmm. Oh, what they found? Oh, nice pit immediately coming out from Trixie. Prevents the jump forward, prevents the chrono. Bottom still getting ratted. Bane. I mean, Evil Core kind of have the same problem that, uh, well, it's sort of the same problem that Five Anchors had in the previous game, right? Where their supports don't shove waves at all. And their Batrider doesn't, I mean, their, their offlane doesn't even really shove waves. It's just the Lesh. So poor Lesh just keeps getting dragged all over the place. I wonder if he even bought the Octarine core thinking about the, like, I just need this boots of travel to down. <laughs> like, I just gotta, Maybe. I gotta, I gotta shove some waves. He's going so is, for the Aeon disc. Yeah, is that really the buy here? I don't think it's that good. Oh, the fact that it turns off all of your damage as well, to me, yeah, seems Yeah, that's super... the thing, right? Like, it doesn't matter if you're surviving, because normally Aeon disc is good for getting off that one key ult, like Ravage or Panda Split or whatever, right? I still, well, I still haven't even seen it be that good in that situation, but uh, yeah, I think that's, to me, that seems to be the idea behind the item, right? It's like having Kraken Shell on a hero that doesn't have Kraken Shell. 
You took the light lightning slow duration. But what about that axe? Yeah, dude? show me the, the axe. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we right, need. He, got, he has it queued up now. Nice, nice, now. nice. Inescapable. Ooh. But the... He just poured it out, and the, the rest of the team is like, has their smoke broken. What's happening right here? Oh, this is no, nothing good. Shivas, they got the hex under the bat rider, four staff away. Do they have another four staff? Omni Knight is in a super compromised position. Straight into the shackles. He's going to be brought down. They can sleep onto the tiny, but he is awake and ready to rock and roll. They do get a chronosphere out into a couple, but they're keeping region away, so there's no damage. Earth Splitter also breaking up the fight. Connect onto three. Nicely played. The lasso on the tiny, but Thompson's still surviving. He's just going to lay in with the fist. They've got the shackle onto the lash. He's down. Everybody's dead. Five man wipe. Triple kill for OKC. Yeah, and I think five anchors. Gonna be saying okay, see ya to Evil Core here as they're gonna tap out GG and five anchors move on forward. Yeah, that was some serious miscommunication that Let's Track poured home as they were smoking around and they just got absolutely dumpstered. They just nothing much to say about that. Yeah, I mean, he had to, uh, he didn't have to go and defend, but I guess he, he felt like okay, team. I'm going back, you need to disengage, and then we'll try this smoke again. Yeah, I mean, it was a team decision, right? If Lesh yeah. goes back, then you don't you don't keep scouting around with your smoke. If you keep going with your smoke, then Lesh doesn't go back. There's no there's no half and half. And then, like, the, the, the Chrono... Kind of, well, the Omni was already dead, but the Omni was so separated from the Lesh. You know, he needs to be playing right behind the Lesh, get the repel off at the right moment. And uh, there you go. Five and inches. that's the problem with support Omni, right? Look at his items. He's got triangle right. bleeds, that's this. Exactly, you need at least a blink or a four staff if you want to, you know, play behind your lash. Yeah, it, it, it worked out decently in the lane, but then I feel like the the bat rider didn't necessarily pay back the attention that he was given in terms of the early game, right? He, he was, after that, he was carrying the responsibility of the position three and the position four, basically. Because the Omni just turned into a repel. At that point, that's kind. Of, that's kind of all he, he contributes. So he's that kid that you put through college, and then you know <laughs> he puts you in an old man's home after that. It's like I don't <laughs> yeah. even care about you anymore. Yeah, yeah. He's uh didn't didn't live up to expectations, but uh, we saw some interesting drafts. I I think this was an interesting series in terms of how some of the drafting went. The priorities for both teams were quite clear at the beginning, and then we had the shift to banning out the well the Huskar ban. Had to happen, and uh, saw some some nice arc warden play. So, I also times. haven't seen Lestrac like win a game. Like he will mm. always do really well. He will always be like the highest net worth and damage. But then, you know, as the game drags late, it apparently just can't carry. I've seen various different item choices. No ax still yet, yeah. but all of them just kind of falter to late game. Yeah, I mean, this was a very uh, quite a farm heavy build. Right, you can. I guess there's also the opportunity to get like a, a Yules and a Kaya and stuff, and run around and try and get kills, but yeah. he, also also falls off. He also put himself through college, but then again, <laughs> wasn't a good son to his yeah, didn't. parents. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for the series. Uh, this qualifier is single Elim, I believe. Right, so that's the that is the end for Evil Corporation, unfortunately. Uh, and I believe that's the case. Yep. Five anchors going to be moving forward. Let's see, is their next round opponent already determined? Because we've had one match played, right? Let's have a look. Let's see. Yes, they're playing against Penta Esports or Penta Sports, who beat Planet Dog. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to see Team Kinguin versus Team Doggy. That'll be cool. See yeah. Kinguin um, in action. Is two minute tomorrow doubleheader? Um, sure. wait, 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 I think tomorrow is actually... Yeah, tomorrow's uh, a doubleheader. Yeah, but... Yeah, tomorrow is... Um... So what, match five? Which is... Okay, so yeah, we've, we it's it's five anchors versus Penta, and then DD versus Singularity? Oh, we're not getting Kinguin yet. No, Kinguin King, just had Kinguin, to fly back from Summit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're teasing that. That's going to be... That'll be a little bit a little bit further down the line. But All right. Well, still, a lot of good teams uh, left. I think Kinguin is probably the big favorite here to take the whole group. But, you know, this yeah. is Zota 2. Anything can happen. Yeah. Who, who's on the Planet Dog 
roster at the at the moment. Well, I guess they're out. Uh, it's <laughs> but... Didi Ra, Kaiser, Milan, J Four. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean they're they're they're, <laughs> they're already out, so maybe I shouldn't. They're do in that. and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, you know they had they had a they had a little bit of a run, but uh, I guess that, that's gonna wrap it up for us for today. I'm gonna go sleep because it's uh, five a.m. Yep. Thanks for joining. Yeah. 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 Had a had a good time. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the coverage. Make sure you join us tomorrow for more uh, Starlighter I League season four coverage. And until then, go play some Dota. <laughs>